kill switch on this 2010 Honda Civic. It's pretty straightforward and it's not really pointless because a lot of people say there's a chip in your key and it's hard to steal it, but for a car like this, people do crazy things. So let's say you get your key stolen, somebody can just come in here and take your car. You won't even know it if they do a good, they do a good job stealing your keys. So that's what a good reason to have a kill switch is for. We're going to go ahead and install one on this car. So let's go ahead and get to it. The materials you'll be using to install this uh, kill switch on your car is obviously a switch, a toggle switch. Um, Radio Shack likes to call them rocker switches because the way they, this one moves. But this one is an SPST. And then we'll need a drill, a big drill bit, and then a super small drill bit. And then you'll need f a file, two files, one big one to make the hole big and this one to make it perfect. It just depends on what you're going to do, how big the, your switch is going to be to make this fit. And then and some wire cutters. And what's something I highly recommend is a soldering iron. That way your, con your, your joints won't come apart. Don't just use black tape. That's not a good idea. But you'll also be needing a fuse holder and a fuse. The fuse should be the rating of the fuse we're going to be removing, which I'll show you in, the, in a few steps. Okay, so the next step is tinning the wires and tinning the switch so that we can join those two wires together and hopefully everything turns out perfect. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, now because we did that, it should be very quick and easy to joint. I might add also that the orientation doesn't really matter. It's a switch, just, just solder them together. And don't, don't think about whether it's positive or negative. And there you go. Now leave your spool of wire there. What we're going to go ahead and do to ensure that these two don't touch is a little later we'll put hot glue in there so that make, to make sure that they're not going to touch and move. So the next step is finding the fuse on your vehicle that will stop the, uh, the car from starting. So let's go ahead and look for that now. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is locate the fuse and I've located the fuel pump fuse. So just to show you how it's going to work, I'm going to go ahead and pull this out and crank the car to see if it turns on. Okay, so I've identified, be careful with these white, these yellow, I mean, uh, these yellow plugs, okay? Be very careful with them because they're airbag related. So, I identified this one right here as the 15 amp fuel pump fuse. So if I pull this, your car will crank for a long time and it'll never turn on. So let's go ahead and try that out now. It won't turn on for a long time, like I tell you. So for this next part, we're going to drill a hole right through the middle of this fuse. We're trying to break this fuse pretty much because we're going to run a wire from here to here. And then we're going to fuse that wire that we're connecting so that we still have the protection that this fuse gives. So let's start off by putting the smaller drill bit. Take your time and do it right, right through the middle where the contact is. Now, if you have one, go ahead and get a multimeter and test this fuse to make sure that there's no continuity with it. Let me go ahead and get mine out. Okay, with your multimeter set to continuity mode, test the both sides. And we have no current. If you touch these two together, you do. Let's do this again. No current. Perfect. We're ready to go. The next step we need to do is we're going to go ahead and measure the amount of wire we need. So I have this 100 foot spool of speaker wire, which is pretty good for its this use. Because you need a pair anyways. So we're going to measure the amount of distance of wire we need. So. The fuse box on this car is over here, all the way at the beginning, so right there on the driver's side. We're going to measure the amount of wire we need. So we'll need about this much wire, and then we'll go ahead and cut it. We'll go ahead and cut it now. So now that we have the amount of wire we need, 
let's go ahead and run it through this where we're gonna put it now we'll feed this uh, this screw on cap with the jagged edges facing the plastic we'll feed it through the wire now so that we can close the, the switch Tighten it with some pliers. There you go. Your switch is ready to be placed. Now on the end that we're going to be running to the fuse, you want to go ahead and peel just a little bit of wire out. Very, very little. Just a little bit out like that. And this is just going to go on the very edge right here. These are going to be very close. That's why you want to keep them short. In fact, keep them a little shorter than this. And what we're going to do is solder this end and this end on the very edge so that we can push this fuse in like that. Your final product should look something like this right here. See, this will allow it to slide in and little, very little interference at all. So hopefully we can get this in there pretty quickly. And let's go ahead and test this out. So now that we have set up the wiring and everything, we're going to go ahead and push the fuse in. Here we go, our finished product right here. Let's go ahead and place it. So let's grab this fuse and place it right. And we're going to push it in right here. Just like that. Maybe a little hard to fit in because of our modifications, but if any problem gives, you have a little file. So we'll use this big one right here and make sure everything's flush. This one is sticking out just a little bit, so we'll file it down. It looks pretty down right there, so let's try it again. Right where we took it out, and we'll give it a nice push. So let's give it a quick test right there. The switch is in the on position. If it doesn't turn on, we just need to push it a little harder or file it down a little more. So as you can see, the car is running right there. And I'm going to flip the switch so you guys can see it turn right back off. So that means the switch is definitely working. Turn it back on. You can see everything start working again. Just give it a crank and it'll turn right back on. Before we forget something very, very important, we need to install the, right here, the fuse holder. I've gone ahead and cut it to size. Well, hopefully you can see there, but we're gonna go ahead and split this wire. Just like that, like that. So as you can see, we have split this wire into two. Now, we're gonna only cut one end. So we're gonna go ahead and cut one and strip like that. Then we'll place this fuse right in the middle. Now we solder them together. Just apply electrical tape or you can use shrink wrap and then we insert the same amperage fuse that we used that we pulled out so in our case it was a 15 which most Hondas will be and we place it in here now what this is going to do is if for whatever reason your fuel pump fails in the future it won't be because of this of course but let's say it fails in the future this will blow instead of that fuse over there So now with that in place, we can go ahead and continue our process of installing the, the wire hidden. We've pretty much finished. It's almost impossible to see. 
it is noticeable and that wire right there if you ran it through somewhere you might want to hide it put a slit in the carpet and push it under the carpet because this is all carpet that you can get under so the more technical you get the more the less obvious it's going to be now i know a lot of people here are probably thinking in the back of their head um, that we ran it through the fuse maybe you could just bypass the fuse and you might be right but the point here is is it's not like it's going to be impossible to steer your car no car is impossible to steal but it seriously reduces the chances of them stealing it let's say somebody swipes the keys off of you your car won't start just like that anymore you'll need to know where the switch is so that's a big benefit if you look down here you can barely see it in the corner very very corner but you can see the wire like i said just remember cut a slit in the in the carpet and hide it under it but we're pretty much done here that's the finished product we put a fuse in there's nothing else to be done nice and clean the car won't start in fact let me give you an example really quick so right here our switch is off Don't be too afraid if your check engine light is on because right here, watch, I'm going to flip the switch and we'll keep the, light, the camera here so you can see right when you turn it on and you turn the car on, it'll go away. And there it is. You have a kill switch in your car, hidden, no wires anywhere, and nobody can steer your car without knowing that switch. So... Thanks for watching guys, click on one of the videos on your screen right now, and if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. Remember guys, like and subscribe, that's how I know you guys like my videos, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Alright, thanks for watching.